Welcome to episode 235. On this installment of Book Chat, joining me are my three book bloggers, one series read-along co-host, Casey and Nicola. We're discussing Etched in Bone, the fifth and final book in this story arc of the other series by Ann Bishop. Stay tuned. Today's episode is brought to you by Audiobooks.com. New customers get one free audiobook when using our promo code AUDIOSHELF. You just need to enter the code AUDIOSHELF on the sign-up page, then click Apply, then fill out the rest of your account info. Support this podcast by using our code AUDIOSHELF and get your first audiobook free. Hey everyone, I'm your host, Tamara Ford, and welcome to Book Chat here on the Shelf Addiction Podcast. Join in this book discussion by finding me on Twitter as well as my book blogger co host. Tweet at us using our special hashtag 3Bloggers1Series. That's using the numeric 3 and 1. Again, that's hashtag 3Bloggers1Series. If Twitter isn't your thing, no worries. You can call in and leave an internet voice message via SpeakPipe. Or you can join the Facebook group, Shelf Addiction Official, and talk about the series with us there. I hope to hear your thoughts on tonight's discussion. The links for everything I've mentioned are below in the show notes. But before we jump into this discussion, I have a quick note as I always do. I want you to get the full enjoyment out of this conversation, so I recommend that you read the book first. This is a book discussion after all, so of course, spoiler alert, you've been warned. Hey everybody, welcome back. We're here again. The ladies are here with me and we're going to talk about the fifth and final installment of The Others. And we are talking about Etched in Bone today. And of course, I'm going to always let them introduce themselves. So Casey and Nicola, please introduce yourselves. Uh, Nicola, how about you start? Okay, good morning, everybody. This is uh, Nicola. I'm I'm a blogger at alphaheroes.net and um, just having so much fun with this podcast. Glad to be here. Yay, welcome. Casey? Hi, everybody. I'm Casey. I'm a reviewer over at Literary Escapism, and I also have my own editing, A a Heart Full of Ink, and I am so excited to be here on this podcast, too. Yay, I'm glad you're both here, and I'm ready to jump into this finale. And first, let me just say, I'm glad it's over, (laughs) and that's going to set the tone. (laughs) Sorry, guys. But that's kind of how I feel. I'm very glad it's done. I would love to know first how you guys felt about the finale. <laughs> I am also glad it is done. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> oh my uh, God. I'm gonna. Yeah, I'm gonna have to say this is more of a whimper than a bang as far as uh, series finales go. <laughs> so. Oh my God. Yeah. I mean, okay. So pacing wise, did you guys think that this? book was better pacing than the last because I kind of felt like 70% of the book was boring. The last 30% was like, okay, finally some things are happening, but that's a lot for me to sit through. It was, it was pretty grueling. It's the same with the last book. Remember there was like nothing going on. They were introducing all the old or the new places. And then like the last 20%, the elders came in and killed everybody. Mm-hmm. And yeah, there was no pacing. There was a little bit more tension in this book, but not much because it was awful. And <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm sorry, you guys. I really hated this book. I yeah. screamed in anger when I finished it. <laughs> I I uh, I feel like it did not wander around as much as the last book. That's about that is true. That is true. That's about the only good thing I have to say about it. Um, I don't know why this book exists. The The stakes are a thousand times lower in this book than they were in the last book. Mm-hmm. Um, and it just, you know, if it started out as like a cozy mystery series where each book was solving some little mystery in this particular world, it might be okay. But we had this big series arc about the end of civilization as we know it and then it ended for some people but not others and now we're just like worried about this one con man from new york like what yeah that's what i was saying to casey earlier like you have all these 
elders and elementals and like this big bad that was trying to take out all of the others but yet this is what brings people to their knees this one little bratty brother who just happens to be really disgusting which he is um yeah, he's it's just a small it's, time yeah. man i mean what how is this a villain yeah bring me back who's the woman in the first one the one that wanted to be a tv star yeah, Wasn't she's better than Asia. She is, but... Asia, yeah. yeah. At least she was interesting. This guy, yeah, <laughs> you know, she was weird and and dumb, but this guy is just boring. Uh, well, I mean, he's raising some god awful children. Like, I have to say that when the one son starts trying to pimp his sister out, I'm like, uh-uh. what in the actual? Uh-uh. Oh my god! Uh-uh. I'm like, you are raising some awful people. Awful people. Yeah, that was gross. Yeah. I'm like, oh my gosh. And you know, speaking of that, like, I feel like overall this series hasn't been very vulgar, but like the last part of this book, they're dropping the P word and all kind of stuff. I'm like, okay, wait a minute. This just seemed like it got a lot more gross than it was this whole entire series. They kind of hinted at that with the prophecy girls, like when they were still captive, but it was more of like hinted at. Yeah. I can't wear it right now, but they're like, oh yeah, you know, they they really enjoy it, and we enjoy them enjoying it. And you're like, ew, this yeah. is really creepy. But they're not saying... Yeah. <laughs> they're not saying Yeah, they're it. just not saying, hey, look at that bald, you know what? Or, you know... Yeah. <laughs> and here they're like, blue, 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 blue. Yeah. I'm like, I... Like the tone like that, I didn't expect it. I mean, for a book where we barely get a kiss, right? We barely get a kiss. We get hand holding. Yes. And but yet they're okay all of a sudden we're okay with all of this vulgarity from like this crappy guy. I mean, I don't know. I guess he was a bad guy. He is so bad. He uses all of these bad words and he is bad. Yeah, but we could see that without you spewing all kind of words. I mean, because he like pretty much harassed his sister, his his mm-hmm. adoptive sister. He like abused her basically. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. 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 Verbal abuse. Yeah. Ugh, I just couldn't with all that. I'm like it just see it like was jarring to me. That's all. Like I don't mind some of the stuff that's more vulgar. Trust me, I don't. I've read some really horrible books, but <laughs> As far as like this, it just seemed like it was character. unexpected. Yeah, exactly. Hmm. Yeah. No, it was. If this had been like the second book in the series, it would have been okay because you know we went from Asia being the bad girl to like this guy, and it would kind mm-hmm. of fit. But being the last book after everything of like yeah, the world like is going to end, and yeah, then like, I mean, if no. It was like a- a Hardy Boys kind of series where it's just a whole new story every time in the same world, uh, mm-hmm. but you're not building up to any series arc. And it'd be okay, maybe. But I mean, this, yeah. the world building could be the subplot. Like, you know, you have the first book where you introduce everybody, the second book where you have a slightly worse bad guy, and, you know, there's the tension in the background, mm-hmm. and then you build up to that tension. But as the last book in the series? No. Yeah. I wonder, it's I mean, flat. there are a couple more books in the world. So I wonder, if, well, I mean, and I don't wonder enough to go read them at this point. No, time, but... I don't, that's what I was saying. I don't have the patience to find out. Uh-uh. <laughs> so I, I, yeah, don't know. I mean, honestly, this book was just boring. That's, that's its, yeah. big, that's its big offense, right? I mean, there's a whole like so there was this whole page about how they were going to do their laundry right mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and i highlighted it because i was just scratching my head i'm like what you know and, and so it like the author transitions away from the conversation about how they're going to take turns using the laundry machine and says while this talk about laundry was interesting up to a point i'm like no no, no it's not it's not interesting at all <laughs> you know she just the author dives into these minute details of how people are trying to live but it's not interesting because it's not that Uh -uh. different than any world that we're familiar with you know it's just 
Like, why would Simon concern himself with how often they have to wash their clothes, you know, yeah. or, or whether they have to take, it, it just, it goes so deep into such um, trivial stuff that it just kills the pacing mm-hmm. and it, there's, it just wanders. It's just like, I, why? I feel like it's for word count. Like, yeah, um, why else adding. do you need to go into that like that? Or even like the types of meats and the cooking and the, the I, constant, yeah. constant talk about meat. Oh, my God. Yeah, oh, not, my not God. A, not a series for the vegetarians among us. Yeah. I mean, just all the different varieties of meat, how how some people like, or, you know, I mean, some of the scenes were even pointless, like the the scene where they had uh, eaten, uh, was it a, a bunny? Somebody ate a bunny or some mess. And she was so distraught because she found the bunny yeah. foot or something the or the backbone. tail. I'm like, oh, yeah, my gosh. I'm like, and like, I'm a bunny. You're going to eat me. And I'm like, oh Meg, why God. are you so stupid? I'm like, you know, you eat animals, right? You know this, right? Yeah. You know, you're with a bunch of wolves that eat animals. Like, I don't I understand. I will say that the bunny thing was a foreshadowing for um, uh, the bad guy's death. Because they made a thing about the, how they found all his bones. Because the, the elementals had cleaned off all the bones. So, hmm. but yes, when the, when you read that scene, you're like, why are they going on and on and on and on and on about that? Um, but then when you get I I thought when when we got to the part where the uh, the elementals took care of the threat the big horrible one man con man (laughs) okay Um, why I mean when they ate those four guys that was worse than that like yeah come on that's true why were the elders one sticking around watching the courtyard and two, demanding that Simon let Cyrus stay there. Well, they like, explained that very clearly, Casey. I mean, it didn't make any I'm rolling my eyes so hard right now. <laughs> it was explained very clearly. They need. I to- think like three times. Three times. <laughs> it never made any sense, but... I don't know. These I mean, whole... are the beings that were like, we're going to end civilization and eat everybody. And then they kind of did, but they're like, we're going to do it again. But we want to watch. And I'm like, yeah, no. We're thinking about doing it part way, but we're not sure what part. It's like. <laughs> I think they want to see if that kind of human could infect the others and they could start acting like that. Well, so here's, you know, if you try to, if you try to give it some benefit of the doubt, so okay so in these kind of books i'll say urban fantasy um some with sort of the big powerful dealios you see at the theme pretty often that the the monsters you know we are the monsters the monsters are not the monsters the humans are the monsters you know this Mm -hmm. is the whole thing about x-men and all those um, mutant based world building right is that people are worse to each other than the monsters are to each other or to us we have more to fear from ourselves than from uh, the monsters under our bed. That, that I think is a common thing you find in books with these big, powerful monster things that people are afraid of. Right. Yes. And that's kind of what we've seen throughout this book is that the, you know, the, the humans first and last are worse than the others and the, and Cyrus is worse than the elders, I guess. I, it starts to break down pretty quick, <laughs> but yeah. the theme that, that you've seen through the last couple of books about the elders and about, it started with, you know, Simon and the others talking about how they take on characteristics of the predators around them. And that's how they became shifters. And that's how the courtyard is sort of expanding its sensibilities from only being wolfish to taking into consideration human kind of things. And now maybe the elders are, going through some of that transition too, where they're like, okay, well let's learn a little bit about these humans. Oh, here's what we learned from you. Tear down the town. Right. Um, Mm -hmm. And now they're learning something else. I don't know. That's where it breaks down because this whole story is just so much small potatoes compared to the first three or four books. I don't get it. Yeah. 
I'm trying to make yeah. sense of it. I'm trying to put some framework on it. And it's still like, the elders want cookies. Yeah, that's so uh, stupid. Don't. Oh my God. <laughs> oh my God. I, like I highlighted. Why? Oh passage where so, he's like, the male studied his hands and claws that had fingers that could write. And I was like, um, what? Right, they're stealing paper and pencils to write that they want cookies and, and that whole and, thing. I'm like, oh, like, like that. I guess that was supposed to be funny. I, I don't. It know. wasn't. The no. whole thing with the elders just was so inconsistent and so just kind of dumb. I mm-hmm. lost. They're my supposed faith. to be the big bad. They're exactly. supposed to be worse than the others. Make them scary. Like nothing about them was scary to me i'm like they're supposed to be like the the worst nightmare of everyone but i'm not feeling that while they're asking for cookies and laughing at meg i'm like get out of here right (laughs) yeah no i mean that's yeah they're humanizing the elders kind of i don't know and you talk about the (laughs) scale of them right how big are they supposed to be they're like they tower over simon right so they're eight or nine feet tall maybe or more and they like cookies like how is that even more than a crumb you know i mean they even talked about um i can't remember his name henry the bear guard uh-huh. mm-hmm. when he's in his spirit wolf form or what uh, not wolf bear form yeah. uh he's even bigger than when he's just a regular bear mm-hmm. and that they were bigger than him still yeah right there are these so. huge monster things but they want the little cookies they can write with pencils meant for human hands no no <laughs> yeah yeah no okay so the world building fell apart in book three the elder thing it never came apart. back together yep the, the elder thing fell apart this book or last book do you think um, and they started asking uh, for cookies in the last book this is the book where i was really annoyed with the elders the last book the last book when they went in there and snooped through the cabinets and they pulled out the cookies and ate them i'm like what is yeah. happening no no so, and the whole chuckling at you know at, men right not wolf left. attempt at oh my god at, at, the, howl? not, at the howling yeah, no. not wolf yeah like no uh-uh. Well, I, you know, no. we, we talk about a force of nature and the, the idea behind something like, and we've got a hurricane going on right now, right? A force of nature does not discriminate between good people and bad people. And um, and I feel like in the stories about, you know, former uprisings, right? They had no thought for who who was hurt. They were just like, hey, these humans mm-hmm. are uh, messing things up. I'm going to squash them. And they did. And then with the Celt Romano thing, they spared a few of the villagers that would sort of be respectful of the elders. So they were selective about that. And now they're being super selective in Lakeside and just like specifically going in after specific individuals. And it just... It has no cohesiveness, no consistency. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. So the moral of the story is that don't let Nicola pick the next series. <laughs> oh, okay. You say that. I will take that seriously. I will. I'll be like, what? <laughs> yeah. Well, I picked the last two and uh, like, you guys need to do the next one. I'm out. I'll, okay. I'll, just, I'll, I'll keep my mouth shut. You guys. You'll bow out right. and just go along. I'll just go along. <laughs> Okay. The first book was good. I love the first book. Yeah. The first book was really good. And I did give that book a five stars. And I still stand behind that because I loved it. And yeah, there are issues, but I loved it. And now I'm looking at this fifth book and I'm like, is this even written by the same person? Because it's so different. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think I even gave book one five stars. I think I gave it a four. I think so I still too. had issues with it. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I mean, outside of like the elementals and the, you know, the elder people, whatever they're called. Um, I feel like there were some other themes that I had problems with in this book that kind of stood out to me even more than before. Like the whole sexism thing. There was a ton of that. Oh my like, God. 
yeah, there was a lot. And there were times where, you know, Meg was upset. And then, you know, uh, Simon's like, oh, put this in. You know, she says she wants to bite something. And she's like, not really. He's like, here, bite on this. And he like feeds her a, a sandwich. And then because she bit him, he's like, oh, you know, she had to feed herself the rest of the time. I'm like, what? Why weren't you feeding yourself to begin with? What is happening? This is dumb. So I just didn't like that scene. (laughs) And then, you know, the whole female cop thing was this big ordeal. Like, how dare you want to be a police officer with a gun? I just... For a chapter. Whatever. Like, like, why why did this... Yeah. And then she she disappeared and never came back. Well, she wrote a letter. She wrote letters. Was that the same chapter, though, when she wrote the letter to the element? I thought that was the the letters. Oh, don't get me started on her and Buddy. That was bullshit. <laughs> yeah. That was bullshit. It was. It was awful. No, but the cop did write a letter, too, because she said, oh, even the, the, the I forgot what they call those people there. They helped me pick out a horse. Oh, right. What's her face is happy with me being her roommate as long as the dog gets along with Buddy. Oh. Blah, blah, blah. It was her writing yeah. the letter at that time, too. Okay, but you're right. there were like two letters, then nothing else, right? right? Or did I miss another letter? Yeah, I don't know. Uh, I just remember that. Yeah, no, it was. Yeah, maybe that's setting up for the next like in the world, and they're gonna go see her be a cop later. But oh, I doubt uh-uh. it. It was pointless and just sexist and awful, and all of the like the female tribe. They're cooking. They're doing this thing. Don't scare the females. The females. The females. I'm just like, yeah. yes, where the females get together and cook all the food uh-huh. and, you know, organize the parties and don't worry them about this kind of thing. They don't need to know. Yeah. <laughs> Let's not bother the exploding puff balls or oh, puff balls or exploding puff balls. Puff balls. Yeah, I'm like, oh, God. Oh. If anybody calls me an exploding puffball, I may punch him in the face. <laughs> watch me explode. <laughs> I don't know. I, yeah. Yeah. I mean, for for whatever reason, the, the um, male-female dynamic was set in about, like, 1850 in these books. Uh-huh. Uh, along with the telegrams, I guess. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> And, and why would you do that? Right. <laughs> right. That's an author's choice, right? right? And it had nothing uh-huh. to do with the technology. It had nothing. And it didn't really start that way, right? Because Asia was kind of, um, you know, not Independent. A, a housewife. She was no, not a housewife. She, and there were she wanted to be an actress. College. Yeah, but and, a, and an investigator, right? Yeah. So, I mean, she's misguided and dumb, but she had ambition. Uh-huh. And you know, I feel like it degraded over time, and I don't know why. If they were just setting up these sort of nineteenth-century-ish villages, I don't know. It made it. It was annoying. Yeah. It was worse. The worst yeah. in this book. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and then throw some prostitution in for good measure. Woo! You know, let's just throw that in there. But let's kill her <laughs> with poison, and yeah. You know. Uh, that's why I said it's worse than ever before. I feel like it was just screaming at me the whole time. I'm like, these women, what is happening? The only person who had a backbone, I think, was Twyla. I think that was her name, the mother. Yeah, you know, Twyla. um, and she still was, yeah, you know, scrubbing floors and cleaning and, and being the secretary yeah, and, and very, very menial and cooking and being the grandma which is not a bad thing but you know she's very woman in the kitchen yep yeah i mean yeah so and she raised the bad guy she sure did she raised a little psychopath like why couldn't you tell something is wrong with him like (laughs) he was abusing his sister her entire life and you couldn't stop it you just assumed it was happening and didn't really say anything that that was the impression yeah. i got was she kind of assumed it was happening but she didn't see any bruises so she just kind of like let it be i thought there was a scene mm-hmm. where she had said that it was she didn't realize it had been so bad that um but i, I don't recall and, and being being the only person on this team here that has reproduced i will tell you that 
you only have so much uh, influence over the kids that you have, and eventually they become their own person and they do what they're going to do. That's so, true. Uh, true. That. Yeah. <laughs> so. that. But you know what? I'm not going to. I'm, I'm going to tell you. While I don't have any kids, I strongly feel that if I had some. If I saw them doing some of the stuff that this guy was doing, I'd be like, dude, you don't know me and I don't know you. Don't come around here because your ass is crazy. I'm sorry. I can't deal with this. Well, she did. She kicked him out when he was 18 and he still blamed the sister. Yeah. But, yeah. Well, no. well, she was around his kids. Well, you know, I guess she wants to be around her grandkids, even though they're a bunch of little psychopaths, too. But Ugh. just the boy. No. And that's another thing, right? There, the 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 I don't know. There's a the men can be so bad. I guess they had Asia was a bad a, a, a villain too, but I don't know. I mean, yep, the the whole okay, misogyny so, in, this, in these series is there is real. Yeah. No. Going off of that, what was the last time Tess really did anything or had any scene time being a badass? Oh, it was yeah. kind of like I was just thinking. Oh yeah. That. Some person got sick, or Cyrus had a heart attack, and that was it. And Tess is like the biggest badass there, and she didn't do anything. And the vampire chicks didn't really get any well, screen time her, either. They weren't supposed to do anything because the elders wanted to observe, so they were res- constrained. You know, I hate to like Sorry. try to rewrite a story, but I would have rather. This book been about, I don't know, maybe a clan from an a area where that was completely wiped out coming there and trying to take from mm-hmm. them. I would have rather oh, like, that, that cool. happened than this whole story. Yeah, yeah. that would have been really interesting. But this was yep. just... I, just The series should have ended... I mean, if we're going to rewrite it, the series should have ended when the human first and last league got wiped out. Yeah. And mm-hmm. that should have happened... On the continent we give any f**ks about, right? <laughs> yeah. And, uh, away. So, yep. uh, and then this 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 epilogue. I don't know. This is this like the. I, this makes no sense from a series perspective. So, the stakes are too low. The like the threads didn't get tied off. Like they're going to repopulate Bennett because that was uh, um, leveled in the last book. Okay. What happened with Bennett? We met three people and they got shipped out on a train. And there was no, a- there are like five women who are going to cook and like 20 men who are going to run the farm. And they got shipped off, and that was that. Yeah. And they, there was a job fair, and the elders noticed the job fair. And uh, just it- that job fair was kind of dumb, too. I'm like, why is all of this happening? Like, okay, I understand the reason why you needed the workers. But I just felt like that was not very important. Mm -hmm. The only thing I could think of is that they're trying to show how Simon's uh, influence just keeps getting bigger and bigger, whether he likes it or not. Right. So he first he brought in Meg and then he brought in more humans and then more humans. And now he's he's got ties into the simple life people and the Bennett people and um so I, that that's the only reason I can think of for it, but it just wasn't a compelling arc, right? Nobody Mm-mm. cared. No, it's especially if we're going to just drop the fact that originally the elders wanted to know why, how much of the human do we yes. want to keep? So why, if, you know, he's growing his influence, making more connections, why aren't they having a problem with him doing all of this? Like, are you telling us we should just be part of the humans? I mean, they did not confront him anymore about bringing more humans, becoming more human-like no. when they're trying to filter out how much they should even keep. I don't understand. I don't either. I really don't. Yeah, because... I don't understand. Seems like the theme for this whole giant plot <laughs> Look, me and Casey are like, I don't understand. <laughs> I don't get it. Yeah, what are the elders doing? Why are they here? Why do they care? Why aren't they just wiping out half the town like they used to or threatened to do? Why are they forcing you to keep the one bad guy around? Like, no. No. So, yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. Like I said, they explained that to you several times, Casey. (laughs) But so so, so they decide when they go out and level a town how to keep the good ones. Um, I guess. 
I don't know. I guess. I, I mean, if they want to do that, make Simon go out and, like, check mark everybody's door who's good. And then kill everybody else. Well, yeah. like they did before with the, the police and the... And they had a couple of locations where they were protected yeah. by the howling wolves, right? Yeah. I don't know. Like, just do that. I will say one more thing that we haven't touched on, and that is the the language that I thought was kind of charming in the first book or two, where it was very simplified, like Meg was learning about how that got very old. Mm. It just was like, it is so ingenuous and so like, I don't know, it just became like you're explaining the simplest things and I don't need you to do that anymore because I'm an adult and I understand things, you know, I just. Yeah. There I were two mouth. other things I highlighted. The first one was in chapter four and that was, I don't know. Meg was like a big sister who was wise and brainless at the same time. Oh, <laughs> I was God. like, oh. this is the perfect <laughs> sentence. <laughs> This is the perfect sentence because it's so true. <gasps> Wise and brainless at yeah. the same time. Wise and brainless. So condescending. Yeah. It is. It definitely is. And I mean, I'm also, while we're talking about Megan, you know, her issues, I kind of was over her whole, and I know this doesn't go away overnight. It's going to always be a thing. But her constantly talking about the cutting. I want to cut, but I won't. I'll grab these cards. I want to cut, but I won't. I'll grab these cards. I'll grab these cards. I'll get these cards. I'm like, okay. Gosh. Okay. We've been through five books of this. I'm just. It, and it's like, you're just going to just. Anytime she has a question, just whip out these cards for everything constantly, incessantly. It's like, okay. I just. I don't know. And then she doesn't even understand the cards mm-hmm. all the way. And she's still doing the whole, well, I'll pick and choose what I want to share. It's like, what? I just, it's stupid. You have a card that is danger and death and like fate undecided. And you're like, oh, I'm just going to sit here and wait and not tell anybody. Yeah. I should tell Simon, but maybe tomorrow. Yes. Yeah, not, nothing, nothing's happened yet. So we'll just sit on this for a little while. No, the other yes. quote I highlighted was when she was talking to Jester in chapter five. And Jester says, you've lived in the courtyard for several months now, and you've been learning all kinds of things during that time. So why are you dumber now than you used to be? Yes. Yes. <laughs> oh, my God. I said, yes. Why? Are yes. You, Meg? That's nasty. Why? Why? Like, my question. Exactly. <laughs> She's calling herself out, and or the author's calling herself out in her own book, but then she kept doing it for the rest of the freaking book. Like, this is chapter four and chapter yeah. five of, Meg, you're being stupid. Why are you so stupid? And then she continues <laughs> to be stupid. <laughs> well, maybe she enjoys being stupid. I don't know. Seems like it's working for her. Maybe she likes it. Yeah. It, because then Simon can tell her what to do and she'll like it. Because she's stupid. Ugh. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, it's not cute. It's, it's not, not cute anymore. It stopped being cute. You yeah, know? the first book I could understand and it was part of the tension and the pacing and the whole like, I don't know anything. And Simon's going to yell at me and possibly bite me and there's all this tension and I'm going to die soon. And you know, and now I'm just like, I don't care. There's danger. There's death. Eh, you've been through it all. Like, what's the worst thing that could happen? Yeah. What did you guys think about the side plot with, um, what was her name? Theral? Theral? The one with the abusive boyfriend? Boring and confusing. And I don't care. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That sounds really no. mean. But like, Really? Yeah. yeah that was yeah that was kind of <clears throat> it was like a side note too like yeah it really could have been interesting it could have been interesting wasn't. but it was just so like they mentioned it in book three then forgot about it then it was mentioned again in book four with the packages and then they forgot about it and then it was kind of like it came to fruition here but then it was totally forgotten about yeah and mm-hmm. like there was maybe three pages worth, if that, 
where Cyrus meets the guy and makes the deal and Meg has the prophecy and then the elders smash him. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Well, I don't know. They got rid of um, what's his face's brother like that fast. Like, come on, come on. Why are we doing this? And you know why you can't why remember we doing his name? Because they keep changing the names. He's got like three names. Like Cyrus. Does he? Yeah. yeah. Cyrus, Cyrus calls Jimmy and Cyrus. Jimmy. Yeah. So so it gets confusing. Monty. <laughs> so so the brother calls Monty CJ. Mm-hmm. CJ. Or yes. Jimmy. Sometimes he calls him Jimmy. Or, or wait, which one's Jimmy? Jimmy or Cyrus is Jimmy. Jimmy is yeah. the bad brother. Okay. Jimmy's the bad seed. Okay. Yeah. So the narrator calls him Cyrus, but he calls himself Jimmy. And it, you know why would why do you do that to your readers? It's not important. Stop it. And Monty <laughs> yes. is also called CJ. Did you pick that up? Yes, because they have the same. Yeah, I did. They have the same initials. Uh-huh. So, um, what was Monty's first name? Crispin. Was, um, Crispin James. Crispin James. And the other guy is Cyrus. Must be James, I guess. Yeah, I Cyrus like James. And their dad's name was James too. And that might be Yeah, that true. was just way more complicated yeah. than it needed I mean, to be. There are families that do stuff like that, but why would you put in a book? Cuz yeah. Anyway, that annoyed me. You know, there was where you know, it was it was Jimmy disrespecting his brother because he wouldn't call him the name he wanted to be called or something. I don't know. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> No, I, I, no. And I knew going into this that I wasn't going to like it. I almost knew ahead of time I wasn't going to like it because I just had this sixth sense (laughs) that it wasn't going to get any better. And I was right. I should have bet money, you guys. I should have bet money. Uh, Yeah. And in the end, you know how I complained last time about... Why introduce the romance if you're not going to deliver? Don't get me started. So, <laughs> don't get, get started. me started. Yeah. I screamed. It's, it's too, too late. late. I'm getting started. It's too late. Oh my god. Fuck <laughs> you. Like, yeah. start me that chapter. Fuck <laughs> <laughs> all of this. I just... I, I apologize, I everybody. Mean, I'm very angry about end. this. But exactly, like, don't yeah. start the sexual tension and amp it up really high for the first two books. Well, you know, the then ice cream backtrack to book. be I don't know what well. You want. <laughs> Sex? Sex would have been good. An actual, like, <laughs> developed I'm conversation sure about, oh, are we in love? I mean, okay, he rescued, well, they rescue her, and he had to change, and he didn't have clothes on, and that, and she was instantly, uh, look, averting her eyes, uh, somebody, can you grab him some clothes? And he's all like, oh, no, she was hurt by another man. <laughs> she can't see me as a man anymore. Oh, God. And then oh, two pages later, he's like, I can't. do I love you? I think I love you. I don't that? know what love is. <laughs> Are we mates? Yeah, should we be mates? Yeah. I don't know. Should we kiss and I find think... out if we even like it? Oh okay. my god! Was worse than this one for that whole like I'm having tingly feelings and I don't know what they are. And it's just like, oh no, stop! You have those feelings every time you give a freaking prophecy. <laughs> okay, like, different tingles. You know, but you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> you know. It's like, oh, they get turned on. Yeah. They're lusty, quote unquote. <laughs> Like she smells lusty whenever she gives a prophecy, which is another whole misogynistic bullshit thing that I hate. I'm sorry. I'm really worked up right now. I know, but you know what? Like on the, like on the real though, on the slide, that could have been a really easy way to hook her and Simon up real fast because she wanted some help and he could have helped Damn her. Straight. And that would have been like, oh, look at them. That's cute. You know, that, I mean, even though it's kind of misogynistic, like I said, <laughs> but if that's how she could have done it, you know, without them all like, oh, let's determine if we're in love and let's determine if we need to be mates. But like, why does so that have to be? It's so confusing for a wolf because wolves go into heat once a year and it's just obvious, but not, but with humans. Only once with a humans, year. I mean, how are you going to ever figure out? Oh. Yeah. 
It's hard for a wolf out there. Oh, my God. <laughs> In the first book, he said he was with mm-hmm. humans before. So yeah, he knows he how to do it. <laughs> he just doesn't want to do it with yep. her for whatever reason. He's yep. like, let's start with kissing and holding hands. I got nothing, lady. Oh, my God. I was so pissed. I mean, he'd rather sniff other places while looking for missing cards than actually kiss the woman. So he he just wants to look the popcorn yeah. off her fingers, and he's <laughs> oh god, yeah, that didn't come back, uh, right? That no, was starting I was, to build into a thing where I like, that the gross. The, the, licking the skin when they're not bleeding was supposed to give some kind of strange sweet blood effect, and that didn't go anywhere. I'd forgotten about that till just now. Yeah, because she realized he'd have to yeah. lick her at some point. So they had to make the licking okay, I guess. Yeah, because that would be kind of a little bit much every. Yeah, because he licks she her a lot. He book, definitely she? licks her a just lot. And licked his cheek at some point. She and did at one it. point. She licked his cheek, and he was and like, he, he almost was like, "Oh, that was so sweet." <laughs> she uh, licked my cheek. No, just. If you're gonna give me a love like story, give me a high. love story. If there's no like sweet belly high with werewolves. I swear to God, let someone lick my face. Uh uh-uh. uh. I swear, <laughs> let someone lick my face. It's over. Well, then you just shouldn't mate with a werewolf. It's over. Character. <laughs> Clearly, <laughs> that's just not gonna work. <laughs> ah, apparently not. <laughs> no. So it's, I, it's not I, a good match. I want to call this sweet belly high with werewolves. Does that work for you guys? Yeah. Mm. It's pretty know. close, yeah. Uh, I mean, I've read YA books with more oh, yeah. uh, robust oh, in the sex yeah. area than this. I mean, my oh, God. Yeah. Like, okay. Yeah. I've. You know, and it's like to me, it's a balance for me. Like, I don't need, you know, like I've, I know I've mentioned this before, but I'm going to mention it one more time. I don't need to have sex on the stairs every ice two minutes hair. or whatever. But I also, <laughs> yeah, with ice in the hair, I don't need all of that all constantly. But I also am don't like this immature 12 year old crap either. Like, where's the balance? Like, I understand at first if that's how things are, but after you've been thrown into a couple of life or death situations, and, naked, you know, you see each yeah, other like, naked. You know, here's the thing Meg's yeah, character did too. not have an arc. She came in socially nope. retarded, she got a little better, and then nothing ever happened after that with her character. She never understood more than she did in the first book. She reverted back. She never became mm-hmm. she never got any more mature than she did by the end of the first book nope but she's the trailblazer she has thing. to be mature she has to figure out what to do for the other girls okay. I didn't but I didn't see that I know but that, my didn't, eyes. that didn't affect <laughs> didn't her either. character in terms of maturity that was just stuff she did to Anything. fill the time you know like oh I'll make a book of pictures oh look a tarot deck is a thing that could that might maybe that would work postcards or tarot deck I don't you know it yeah. okay yeah. so she's figuring out a few things about being a a blood prophet but that was not the focus of any of the books it could have been a good way to make the the arc gel but yeah. they didn't do that they she explored oh. that as sort of a byway on a, in what book three maybe when they brought all the girls. They were, they were looking at how they were surviving or whatever, but they didn't. Sh- the author didn't tie up those threads at all. Like, are there lots of ways to give prophecies, or just a couple of ways, or yeah? Oh, how did you like that? And she was oh, dreaming. Yeah. Remember that she was yeah. dreaming. Like a after she read the cards, and the cards yeah. were like in her dream. Mm-hmm. But the doctors being murdered, mm-hmm. that would have been a cool and subplot. It never went anywhere except she hung out like, with the body for a little while. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, which was a, it was a throwaway. That could have oh, been a yeah. better like, subplot, actually. Who's killing the doctors? Why? What are they planning? What are they doing? I would have wanted to learn more about that. Yeah. And Cyrus and his... There are a couple, yeah, there whatever. are a couple more books, so that might show up in, in some of the... The, the non-lake side books. I'm not reading them. 
I don't, I don't know. Um, I kind of feel like I heard somewhere like the next book is kind of like focused on the crows or something. Like I feel like I heard it takes a different, like the uh, there's yeah. a different main yeah. character. Not, you know I, I mean, mean, I don't know, but um, the same group. I, I'm just saying because because I don't know that's a possibility, right? So yeah, I mean anything is possible. Yeah, but I am too angry to pick up another book <laughs> so somebody tell me what happens <laughs> yeah no don't tell me i don't care don't tell does me. it get better we're okay <laughs> tam's okay tamara's okay don't do does it does this plot hole ever like get picked up does anybody ever care about the doctors ever again no seems like no yeah, because then they could have dug into like, oh, all the blood blood prophets are at risk. We've got to hide them, or you know, Meg, hurry up and sort out ways to use the powers so that these people can protect themselves. It could have been a whole thing. Yep. Yep. Just a lot of mm. put- Meg could have gone on an adventure outside mm. of the courtyard, grown a bit. Yeah. It, oh, yeah. but then she would. Yeah. 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 So opportunities lost. <laughs> let's talk about the meltdowns for the CDs being in the wrong order, right? So she melts down if her CDs are in the wrong order, but she gets kidnapped and it doesn't happen. <laughs> right? Oh my God. So look, I'm like, okay. So she's okay. Not only that, like the dis, you know, the fact that she's in a different environment, different smells, different sounds, everything, all that stuff should have creeped her out. But the fact that she was trying so hard not to cut herself at all costs. And then S- Cyrus, or whatever the hell his name is, he what? just cuts her like Over several times. And she other doesn't even cuts, freak like, out. Her other scars, which is supposed to be like super brain yeah. damaging and terrible. <laughs> and she's like, nope. I'm good. Yeah, like you just all these images are running together. They explain the, yeah, that the cutting worst. across cuts yeah, was, was like worst. detrimental. Like you cannot do that. Yeah. Like I would have been freaking out, like screaming bloody murder. You're gonna cut that, you know? But she's just like she's like yeah. Not. I'm gonna sit know. in the trunk while he goes inside and eats for an hour because this isn't the place for me to run away. <laughs> and I was like, are you kidding me? Yeah. You have your freedom right now and you're just going to stay. I know. But just get it cut a couple more times until you get to that point, though. I mean, yeah. my gosh. so many inconsistencies and not making of sense. Yeah, I feel, <laughs> I'm sorry, everybody. I mean, I feel like the last three books, I you know, we've kind of been tearing it up. But it's true. I mean, look, that's one thing you can count on from us. We <laughs> yeah. will tell you our honest and goodness opinion. You will know when we love something, it's a legit love because we will just gush in a real way. And so you also know that when we think something is not good, you know we're telling the truth. And it's, you know, so I'm sure you, you know, you got to appreciate that. Nothing else. You're honest. Yeah. yeah. I, Plus, I we're so. So. okay. So I just I did a quick look, and there are two more books so far in this world. One is um, set somewhere completely different with completely different characters, as far as I can tell. But the other one is set in Bennett, the one that they were trying to repopulate. So maybe some of that stuff comes back. It looks like the the female police officer is the main character for that one. So at least there's a, a thread there. If you're dying to know more about Bennett, which if you've been listening to us at all. I, I wouldn't recommend it, but you know, you never know. <laughs> could it, this could be awesome because here's the thing about Anne Bishop. Reviews. Some of her yeah. stuff is amazing. And apparently some of it is not. What, what, what is the amazing stuff? I sh- we should have read that. There are people who really, really love her black jewels trilogy or series. I'm not sure how many books there are in it. Um, I, I've, I've heard rave think- reviews about that series. So, Okay, so, yeah, okay, well, somebody loves this book. A lot of people love this book or this series. It just wasn't it for me, It started out strong, and I was really excited for it, and then it just fell apart. It really did. It, it just fell apart. It had great potential, and if she'd done some things differently, I would have loved it, but nope. <laughs> nope. Wah, wah, yeah. wah. Ugh, okay, so <laughs> let's want, want, yeah, so you know, as we do, 
let's rate this uh, book. You know, we're coming in at 50 minutes. So let's rate it because you, you guys pretty much know high level what we think about that. Uh, so let's rate it. <laughs> Uh, All right. Nicola, you first. Well, I'm the soft touch of the group, and I think it was not as bad as the last one, which I rated a two. If I could, if Tamara would let me do half stars, I'd call it a two and a half. Uh, this one might be a three, but it's really not a great series finale. It's not what I want from a, a series ending book. So, I don't know. Somewhere between a two and a three. I'm going to make it a two because it should have been better as the finale. Okay, Casey? As you can tell, I am very angry at this Mm -hmm. book. I am very angry at Mm. this book. There were so many plot holes and inconsistencies and things that just straight up didn't make sense. And that last chapter, that last chapter, I screamed as I put the book down. (laughs) I, Mm. yeah. It was like, are you kidding me? <laughs> <laughs> I waited five books for that one page for that. of are we mates? Are we in love? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I'm still so angry and bitter over that that I'm giving it a one star. Like I can't I can't do anything okay. higher than that. Okay. For me, I'm gonna come in with the same rating as last time, which is a two. Uh, It took me five days to finish this book, and I literally just finished it right before we hit record. Like, (laughs) literally. (laughs) The work so hard. Yes. It was a struggle, and like I mentioned earlier, it took a lot for me to finally feel like the pacing was where I liked, where it started getting interesting, and the rest was just filler. It was 70% filler to me, and... That's never good. But, you know, I feel like I still liked some things. So that's why I'm going to go with the two. But I definitely would never recommend this series for people that love the same books as me. So if you love the same stuff as me and we rate things similarly, you should just avoid this series. So, yeah. 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 Wah, wah. <laughs> and another series comes to a close. Yes. The three book bloggers take down <laughs> another series. <laughs> that's our, that's becoming our thing. We're like, let's find a good series and take it down. Because that's what we're going to do. <laughs> yeah, so the last line of this book, just for our readers, just to save you guys some trouble, here's how it ends. Um, I, think, I think we like it, Meg breathed. This is after a kiss. I think we should try it again, just to be sure. They tried it several more times, just to be sure, and eventually they decided that they did like kissing. They liked it a lot. The Are you kidding me? The end. Oh. The end. Oh. Sweet Valley High <laughs> with Werewolves comes to an end. If I could throw popcorn, <laughs> I would. Boom. <laughs> Rock tomato. Oh. I... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh if that gosh. was the end of book Ugh. two, and then book three picked up with them like continuing that, that would have been okay. But to end the series yeah. on that, no, <laughs> no, they just stay friends forever. They just they just stay kissy hands, friends or kissy friends, cream. Yeah. lick each other's cheeks. Oh, oh god, <laughs> <laughs> I can't. <laughs> oh. My goodness. Okay, guys. Well, thanks for being on this ride with us. Let us know what you thought of it because, you know, I'm sure you have some Are feedback we wrong? for us. Did you guys love it? Why? How could you love this? Tell us. If you loved that ending, yes. come fight me. <laughs> <laughs> fight me. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Oh, no, not to fight me. Oh, gosh. Okay. Y'all better be careful because Casey will win. She will win, you guys. Um, so, yeah. So use the hashtag three bloggers one series and let us know. Also, if you don't know already, there is a Facebook group. So come and talk to us over there because we'll be starting a new series really soon. Stick around for that update. It's going to be coming any week now. So we'll get ready. We're going to start something new soon. Yeah, let's get excited. It's going to be something new. Let's, let's be <laughs> 
just need to read the first book in a bunch of series, maybe. <laughs> we need to read the last yes. book in the yeah. series to make sure it's good. <laughs> yes, let's cross all the fingers, all the toes. So, anyway, it's been a it's been a blast as usual, ladies. Yeah. And thanks for listening, everyone. And we will catch you guys next time. Happy reading! Bye, everybody. Bye. If you enjoyed today's episode and would like to show your support, there are a few things you can do. Head on over to Apple Podcasts and leave a positive five-star review. You can follow me on Twitter and Instagram. Most importantly, you can share this podcast with friends and family that love pop culture, from books and audiobooks to TV and movies. I'll see you next time here on the Shelf Addiction Podcast.